Today's episode is sponsored by Rocket Mortgage. Do you feel anxious? Stressed? Does the weight of all your responsibilities bring you down? Well, what if you could solve those problems in just a few easy steps? Introducing Feng Shui. Feng what? Feng Shui, an ancient Chinese philosophy dating back 5,000 years. With just a snap, go from drab to fab as Feng Shui melts the stress away. Wow. I love feng shui. But does it actually work in real life? That's what we aim to find out today. I love feng shui. <laughs> Hello, Internet! Welcome to Style Theory, the show that's changing your life one crazy experiment at a time. Real talk, life? It's hard, man. Adulting sucks. There's taxes, there's bills, there's your job, kids, family get-togethers, loading the dishwasher, unloading the dishwasher, laundry, mowing the lawn. It is a non-stop litany of to-do lists. Or if you're younger and you're still lucky enough to have your parents doing most of that stuff for you, there's still homework, there's friends, there's chores, there's extracurriculars, there's the simple pressure of being a kid in the digital age. It is a lot. Enter style theory, where we realize that style means more than just fashion and beauty. It's also about life. Life style. Huh, go figure. It's almost like we thought about that before we launched the channel. We are playing 40 chess up in here with our branding. Anyway, in our latest effort to solve the anxieties of the world, we wanted to tackle the home decor concept of feng shui. You know, that thing that you don't know how to spell and that people keep talking about over on HGTV. It's a feng shui nightmare. All the money is going out the front door. This is a real thing, Jeff. This so you're problem. telling me you're on feng shui? No, no, not thing. me. And you're on wizards. Feng shui well, is real. Know, wizards are fake. No, they're both real. <sighs> Forgive me if I doubt the life advice coming from the reality TV host insisting that wizards are real. In short, feng shui is an ancient Chinese philosophy dating back to at least as early as 5000 BC, all centered around finding harmony between you and your surrounding environment. The term literally means wind water, which are elements believed to help direct the energy flow of the universe. And that right there is the core of feng shui. The belief is that the arrangement of your surroundings can positively or negatively impact your life, from your energy levels, to your mood, to your health, to your fortune. If the staircase is coming out the door, that means the money's running out of the house and they're gonna go broke. I don't know. As a man of science, this all seems a bit too woo-woo for my tastes. But also as a man of science, I believe in testing and data. So we decided to try it out. Would following the principles of feng shui help us transform our spaces into calmer, more productive areas? Would it help clear our minds from the everyday stresses of the world? Or would rearranging the house only cause more headaches for our already stressed out lives. Cord management is starting to stress me out. Right? What am I supposed to do with this cord? Like if you had like cord attachments in the middle of the room, maybe. But now we just have random cords everywhere. That, my friends, is what we aim to find out today. Now, right off the bat, it's important to understand that feng shui isn't just a single thing. Instead, it encompasses many schools of thought, teachings, and interpretations that have evolved across thousands of years. Which means that our test today is only gonna be focusing on the four main principles widely agreed upon by most feng shui practitioners. Nature, clutter, command, and balance. First off, feng shui promotes incorporating nature into your room design in the form of plants and natural light. The rationale here is that plants represent growth and absorb negative energy. And while that certainly sounds very mystical at first blush, it's actually not that far off from reality. Plants do absorb negative energy, the CO2 waste that we breathe out, replacing it with life-giving oxygen. So I can see a world where this sort of philosophy checks out. The positive effects of plants have also been supported through research, with studies showing that workers exposed to indoor plants have better attention spans. Another study on their effects in healthcare environments showed that people reported less stress when they were in rooms with indoor plants. As for natural light, in feng shui, sunlight's viewed as providing healing energy, which again, feels pretty darn fantastical, but also isn't that far from scientific truth. Sunlight's been shown to boost serotonin production in the brain, the neurochemical that makes you feel happier. Principle two, clutter. In other words, get rid of it. Basically, feng shui says that clutter blocks blocks the flow of positive energy around you, surrounding you with unfinished business that can prevent new opportunities from entering your life. The basic idea is that if you have unfinished projects lying around, they're constantly reminding you that you're being unproductive, until so you start to internalize negative attitudes like, I can't finish projects that I start. And again, science reinforces this conclusion. Many studies have found that
that clutters associated with elevated levels of cortisol, the stress hormone. However, Feng Shui proposes a very easy solution. Lose everything that you don't plan on touching or using in a given day, and only keep around the items that are going to remind you of your past successes. These then promote positive thoughts and provide a sense of accomplishment. Principle 3, Command. In other words, optimizing how you position the most important pieces of furniture in any given room. This one goes pretty darn deep, but the TLDR version here is that you should have a clear line of sight to the door without being directly in line with the door. This then puts you in a commanding position to see who's entering or leaving the room, preventing any unwanted jump scares from someone sneaking up on you, while at the same time not being so focused on the door that you're distracted by what's down the hall. Our final principle here is elemental balance. The basic idea here is that there are five core elements, wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. Each of these can be represented in our environment by a physical object, like a piece of wooden furniture or a ceramic piece of pottery. It can also be represented by a color. Water is deep blue and black. Fire corresponds to reds and bright yellows. You get the idea. Each element is meant to offer some sort of benefit. For instance, earth offers grounding, metal offers clarity. But the overall goal is just balance with all elements present. Shape, also important here. For instance, designs with sharp edges or harsh patterns, they're said to cut off creativity and induce stress. Instead, feng shui recommends using more curved pieces to create openness and a better flow of energy. So, with all of that in mind, it was time to start the experiment. Steph and I were ready to transform the most stressful room in the house, our office, into a feng shui serenity palace. Hi, style theory. Hey, AD. Welcome to our office space. Oh my gosh, we can't wait to have you over. We... <laughs> didn't do anything to change it before you arrived, obviously. It's actually very obvious obviously, that we haven't done anything. Yeah, seriously, uh, we didn't. So do you'll notice right below us is our rug. It is very angular and very geometric because we are very repressed people and the hard edges of the shapes and the black and white coloring is really indicative of how constrained we feel as human beings. Yeah, we really just hold ourselves in until the absolute point of bursting and that we really want to reflect in our personal style. There used to be about four Diet Coke cans all just sprinkled around in like a, a really nice melange, if you will. They really brought out the desperate desire of trying to stay awake in order to get through the amount of work that I need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. It's sculptural, but also functional. My mom gave me this street map of London, which I feel badly throwing away because she's my mom, but I have Google, so realistically, this is never gonna get used. Oh, oh, this is a, this is a particular highlight. This right here is literally this right here is fantastic. This is Stephanie's charger for these headphones that no longer work, that she permanently fused to the desk with the sticky. These don't work anymore, nor have they ever worked. Coming over to my desk, there's the... Ah! I don't know why this is still here. Here's a mouse <laughs> that ran out of batteries a bunch of times, and it should be thrown away, but I'm like, well, maybe it still works, and I just don't have the skills to use this mouse without it running out of batteries all the time, so it just sits here and often gets confused for my actual mouse. This is a phone charger that charges really slowly. I got that for her for Christmas. Real talk. Stephanie does not charge her own phone. <laughs> She just leaves it there and then winds up surprised <laughs> that it's not charged. Even though I have set up no less than four charging banks at the various places around the house that she sits at for extended periods of time, her phone sits right there, right next to it. And then the morning she's like, why is my phone not charged? So I put things right here. Forgive me for it being a little slow. I'm starting to see where this experiment is going. Here's Matthew's sweater because Matthew leaves articles of clothing all over the office, usually individual socks that don't have matches. There are usually like six separate unmatched socks strewn all over, height, height indiscriminate. They could be up there, they could be down on the floor, they could be draped across the computer, they could be anywhere, and they never have a match. No. Ever. No, that's because wearing one sock is the ultimate way to wear a sock. But let us not forget this. This is the congratulations gift that we sent to all of our friends for the launch of Style Theory earlier this year. It has sat in the same position on Stephanie's desk since we set these out at the beginning of this year. No joke, I went to move it like two weeks ago. She's like, no, no. Don't do that, I'm going to do something with that. And here it remains. Clearly, we need all the help we can get. Luckily, we weren't doing this one alone. To get as much data as possible, we enlisted the help of GT Live fan favorite Ash and her partner Tamar, who both volunteered not just one, but two rooms of their new apartment to our specific cause. Hey y'all, Ash and Tamar here. It is our third 
third night living in this new place. We just got here. And when we found out that Style Theory was gonna do this feng shui experiment, we were like, yeah, man, why don't we set up our new place for success? So that's what we're about to do today. What we are planning to do is we are going to try and do this experiment on the same timeline as Matt and Steph in our living room and also upstairs in our new office space. The goal of doing this is to increase creativity and decrease our stress and anxiety. I would say stress and anxiety are pretty high because we just moved. Yeah, we are so stressed out. Literally anything can send us over right now. For all of our collective sakes, I hope this one works. Now to measure how effective feng shui was at changing our mental and physical health, throughout the two week period of the experiment, we did check-ins to note any changes that we were feeling. Were our stress levels lower? Did our productivity suddenly go through the roof? Or was all the upheaval of moving just a waste of time and precious man hours? So equipped with instructions and new home goods shipped over from creative director Amy, it was time for the lifestyle makeover. All right, let's do this. All right, we've gotten our instructions from Amy. We've gotten uh, an influx of new things to sprinkle around our office. So I guess we get to it. Uh, starting with the repression rug. Get it out of here. Get out of here, you thing that symbolically represents all the tension and frustration that I keep bottled up on a day-to-day -day basis. I think we can move it to the channel manager's office. I think they can take some some refreshing <laughs> yeah. and pent up frustration. Oh, good. I'm sure Josiah and Sam would love that. We'll just kick the frustration down the hall. It'll be great. <laughs> Pay it forward. And so the repression rug, it had to go. In its place, we had a rounded rug to improve flow and creativity. better already. Note to production team, double check your measurements, please. Well, note to the executive staff, rugs are expensive. Fair enough, then he made the right call. Anyway, whether ironically or unironically, our tiny rug replacement, it did manage to get the good vibes of flow in. Oh, oh, I feel Here. the circle flowing through me. Here, move over. I mean, here's the thing. I feel less stressed by how much this makes me laugh. <laughs> it's so <laughs> tiny. It's the teeniest circle. Does Feng Shui have no sense of proportion? <laughs> I do feel cool though. Next up on the to-do list was decluttering. Okay. Boom! Big on style theory box. Johto, let's go. Clearly I was having myself a grand old time. Steph though, yeah. Not so much. Let's see how I'm gonna touch. What if I touch this rock regularly? It's sort of like a little stress rock. Thought rock? Keep a little it. thought rock. A thinky rock. Okay, so I'm gonna keep the thinky rock because I I genuinely touch the thinky rock. Okay, keep the thinky rock. Okay. What about your crystals? Do you touch the crystals? <gasps> I you know Do I you charge up? I alternate between touching crystals and touching faz tokens. I like looking at this. Depending on the day. But sacrifices needed to be made. So I was forced to make some truly difficult decisions. The faz tokens had to go. Let's be honest, I think about FNAF enough anyway. What about this? I like it. What about a picture of my son and wife? I'm not touching this every day. <laughs> Screw that. Over the next half hour, we debated the merits of every little knickknack and tchotchke in our office until we were left with nothing but the bare essentials. Ooh. Stephanie, did you know that we were nominated for a Streamy Award for Creator or Social Good in 2022? Hey-o! <laughs> 2022! What's underneath it? Some probably important employment. Oh, look, a document that we definitely should... Oh, a quarterly tax return. <laughs> We are very organized. Having removed all of our clutter and some important government paperwork, it was time to add the plants. This isn't just any plant. This is a money tree. Hey. Looks like Amy was dropping some not so subtle hints for boosting our budget in future episodes. I will give you three money trees if it means you'll let me get you a bigger rug. That said, out of everything in the room makeover, it was the plants that actually had us the most worried. How much water do these need though, realistically? Because sometimes we go on business trips and then we come back and the plants are dead, and it's very sad, guys. If you're feeling overwhelmed, lay on the circle. Okay. Circle, I'm afraid that I'm gonna kill the plants. Luckily, Amy had thought of that in advance, and so she got us some easy to care for, cat-friendly plants, which then led us into the heavy labor portion of the episode. Our office actually has two separate entrances, one into the house and one out to the deck. So we had to figure out the best command position for both of us. Basically a not-so-spicy logic puzzle. You and me, commanding. I command this way, so you gonna, command this way. Wait, how are you gonna be commanding this? So Speaking of logic puzzles, the mirrors, which added a few more circles and organizational nightmares to the room. We have two mirrors on two sides of the same closet. Sure. And they're different heights. 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, mine's the appropriate height. No, 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 mine aligns with the fan art. No. I was taking my cue from the existing, the existing feng shui. Oh, and I was taking my cue from the existing foundational structures of the house. No. Uh, yeah. Just some random height above the light switch. Uh, an appropriate relative height to the light switch. Once we got everything squared away, I was feeling cautiously optimistic. I am hopeful. Do I think it's gonna make a substantial difference? No, but do I think that it's going to improve our mental well-being just to have stuff that's been lingering around for a long time put away? Yes. Yes, I do. Steph, meanwhile, she was feeling a bit reflective, maybe thanks to all those mirrors. This is why. This is why this episode exists, because interior decorating is kind of hard, actually, and I called one interior designer one time and they came over and they were so snotty and mean to me and I have never forgiven them and I've never lived it down and I've never called another one because I can't get over it. And so this is why, this is why we have a problem. <laughs> this is why we're here. Because I couldn't get over one interior designer. I'm so exhausted from this process and all we've done is moved two desks and hung three three mirrors. And while Steph and I were working away in the office, Ash and Tamar were going through a very similar process over in their apartment. A very similar process. Amy got us, um, peep, uh, rug? Peep this rug. Um, it's really little. <laughs> He's just a little guy. You know what they say, it's not the size of your rug that matters, it's how you use it. And sometimes the way you use it winds up being incredibly redundant. So we're going we're just gonna put this right in the middle of the room. And it looks like that <laughs> just in the middle of the room the carpet changes texture. <laughs> I love it. It's good, it's a slave. I don't know what it's giving, it's but it sure is. Amy, real talk, what happened with these rugs? I am a burrito of shame. I hate rugs. Also, next time, give me the dimensions of the room that you need me to shop for. It's not my fault! So while the rugs wound up being a big ol' miss, they also added a few plants and some round wooden artwork to decorate their walls, all while repositioning their couch to the proper command position. Over in their office, they added some metallic pots and a matching set of mirrors. There is no way this is a space I'm inhabiting. Like, what? I, that, this is for people that are put together. And just like Steph and I, Ash and Tamar, they were feeling optimistic about the test. So what I'm really excited about with this experiment is not only making my house a little bit nicer, this new place, it's also kind of establishing new habits, right? A big part of this experiment is taking away clutter, something I am notoriously terrible at. I am very heavily ADHD hardwired, even though it's a little bit harder for me to keep things put together, to kind of keep that clutter away. I'm hoping this helps me sort of recalibrate my habits and see if I can actually keep things a little bit cleaner and if that actually impacts my stress levels and my anxiety levels. I'm really interested to see if this helps with my focus levels, my creativity levels, and just my sense of being calm and relaxed. And with that, the redecorating portion of the day was officially over. But with everything in place, would it work? Would we achieve greater peace of mind and ascend to nirvana? Well, that, my friends, will all be revealed after we give a special thank you to our sponsor for today's episode, Rocket Mortgage. We've worked with Rocket Mortgage in the past, and I'm super excited that they came back to work with us again, because they have an amazing channel right here on YouTube.com, available for free for you to watch, called Rocket Learn. It is without question the best place to learn about all things home. From home loans and finances to the histories of some of the coolest homes across America, Rocket Learn has it all. My favorite show is Home Lore. Bet you can guess why I like it so much. The show is one part house tour and one part deep dive into the history of some pretty interesting places. In one of the more recent episodes, they opened the doors to the Hillwood Estate, a 1920s mansion built by Marjorie Merriweather Post, one of America's wealthiest business people. But what made it especially interesting was that she made her fortune in cereal and fast food. And if you've ever watched watched Food Theory's programming, you know that I love talking about both those things. And while I don't think that Marjorie got the memo on Feng Shui's minimalism trend, her house is full of these incredible treasures like Fabergé eggs, even a chair owned by Marie Antoinette. That said, she did have
have a Japanese Zen garden on the estate too, so I imagine that she was doing pretty well for herself. Nowadays, it's a museum, and I definitely need to add it to my bucket list of travel destinations across the US. Rocket Learn currently has over 20 episodes available of home lore, all there to keep you entertained and educated. So go click the link that you see in the description below to check out the full episode of home lore, and while you're at it, make sure you're subscribing to Rocket Learn so you never miss any of their amazing content, hoping to make you a better homeowner, better home shopper, or just being aware of homes in general. Thanks again to Rocket Mortgage for sponsoring this episode, and now let's check back in with the office. Over the rest of the week, we just went about business as usual, attending meetings, writing scripts, all the normal boring behind the scenes stuff that goes into making these videos, and that meant plenty of time in this new office setup. So at the midpoint check-in, we had plenty of things to say. Hello, welcome to my new calm office. What questions do you have for me? Well, live action me, how are you feeling? Any improvements? Any complaints? You know, I gotta say, having reduced clutter on desks has been very nice. I do know in the back of my mind that the clutter exists unorganized in various drawers that we just shoved it into, so that's not the greatest, but I think overall, the lack of clutter and the general openness has been really beneficial. Only keeping around the objects that I used regularly was delivering positive effects on my focus in more ways than one. Shh, Justin. <laughs> Are we done meditating? Yes. Speaking of which, <laughs> definitely yeah. the right choice over those Faz tokens. That said, there was still one piece of clutter that had to go. Right, what is the deal with the one printer in our office? Because on one hand, it's a little bit distracting, because if anyone comes in to use the, the office's one printer that just so happens to live in our office, I'm like, that was a bad design decision. You know what, what would feng slay me? is getting that printer out of here. Note to self, next time we do a redecorating episode, that printer gets to live with Sam and Josiah like the repression rug. In all seriousness though, by paring the office down to just the essentials, I was able to focus on all the smaller distractions that were also harming my day-to-day -day productivity. And I wasn't the only one who was feeling the benefits that came with a clean desk. I exist in a situation where I get a lot of requests every day. I come into every day with an already pre-existing to-do list from the things that I didn't have time to finish from the day before, and then I I walk in and I have new requests that come in like as soon as I'm at my desk in the morning. So when it comes to trying to figure out what I'm doing during the day and prioritizing, that can actually be a challenge in and of itself. And so having f fewer things around me creates fewer distractions. It doesn't eliminate my distractions or my feeling that I'm being pulled in multiple directions, but at least my physical space isn't contributing to that. It's all just it's all just in here. And while Tamara was also feeling the focus, she did have one minor issue. I will say that it feels very nice in here. It feels a little sterile, I want to say. Maybe that might just be because we don't have very many decorations in here. Like we've got the lamps and we've got the plants and then we've got like my computer. So it, I have been like focused, but it feels very like co-working space core. In terms of like my old spaces and how that was set up. This is just better. It's just better. But I do foresee another challenge, right? Because yes, right now I feel so much more motivated and inspired to like put stuff away. Um, But when stuff is away, I forget it exists. I just don't I don't remember anything. I feel like we should get that looked into, Ash. I don't think moving some furniture around is gonna help with that. Speaking of things that didn't really seem to be helping, the colors. Do you like the color? Um, the fact that I don't have an immediate answer for you should probably tell you that the color has made little difference in my life. Very brown. I'm actually not a big fan of beige, so I don't really love the sandy, earthy tones. I could take it or leave it. There was one color, though, that was unanimously loved. The green. I do like seeing the green. I feel like I'm in a little jungle setting. Steph and Tamar, they also grew to love their plant babies. I love feng shui. <laughs> Very, very beautiful out the window, and so I think that combined with like the colors in here and the plants, that does make it feel like a nice creative space. And while the tiny rugs were still pretty much useless, they did continue to bring me joy each and every time I looked at them. So overall, I would say that the results of week one were locked in as cautiously positive. When it comes to this week, I've felt more positively about my own behindness. <laughs> it feels like an art 
to me. I already feel more motivated to use these feng shui principles in other rooms in my home. I think the fact that we have some spaces like fully set up and clear does actually give a nice contrast to the rest of the house, which is not done yet. And being in the spaces that feel like done and clean and organized and intentional feels really good. I will say on the whole, I went into this episode being like, this is dumb. But the small changes that have happened have yielded some results, which is significantly more than I ever expected. Overall, we all seem to be a bit more focused and a little less mentally stressed. But would those results hold on for an extra week once we had gotten accustomed to everything? Shockingly, no. The results actually got better. By the end of the second week of testing, the overall consensus was that everyone felt more focused and in control. The overall lack of clutter was the single number one biggest all-star change that we all made. I would say I definitely feel more focused with less stuff on my desk. I would say that less is more is absolutely the mentality to go into in my desk space. And my desk had been pretty cluttered for a while because just stuff just piles up, you know, and you're like, oh, I'll deal with it later. And actually just clearing the decks made a big difference. So I feel more focused, less stressed, and definitely less distracted. It has been really nice to have these couple of spaces that feel not only done, but well done. I definitely feel less distracted in the office than I did in our previous office. Yeah, you know what? I am less stressed and I am less distracted. I had an email come in today being like, emergency, emergency, it's Friday and next week's theory is not going to be ready in time, so we have to do a last minute pivot. And I nodded my head and I'm like, all right, we're going to solve that. As opposed to, oh no, now I'm all stressed and this has ruined my entire weekend, which it has but I'm calmer about it. But it was Ash who seemed to experience the biggest benefit. I genuinely think this made a really big difference. After I was diagnosed with ADHD in college, I got accommodations from the university to do testing in a testing center. So I was put into this really small room with a clock on the wall, really boring paint, um, and just nothing else going on. It created the environment where I didn't have a choice but to focus on what was in front of me. And I kind of feel like that is the vibe I got from this. Because there weren't distractions, I've seen improvements in my own work ethic and my focus, which sounds crazy and does feel that way. I think it's true. I really think it's true. So what's the big takeaway of this episode? Is feng shui really the magic cure-all for getting rid of all that pent-up stress and anxiety? The short answer, no. Feng shui did not cure any of our problems. What it did do though was help in subtle, smaller ways. Steph felt better when she saw the plants. I smiled every time I stepped on that stupid rug. Ash felt more focused without all the clutter and Tamar liked the vibe of the colors. In a funny way, I think that feng shui works a lot like YouTube optimization. On any given YouTube channel, there are tons of small things that can all help your video do better. You can have better colors in your thumbnail. You could have more exciting words in your title. You could have better writing, better visual editing, faster pace. The list literally goes on and on and on. And each one of those things helps a little bit. An extra percent click through here, a few extra watch minutes there. Alone, it's not doing a whole heck of a lot. But together, all those small things add up to make a big difference. Feng Shui seems to function similarly. One small rug, a little less clutter, fewer harsh lines. It accumulates. It snowballs. And if you spread it across your whole living space and not just limit it to a single room, I suspect it would help even more. When Amy pitched me this episode, I'll admit, I was skeptical. I thought that this one was going to be a big old bust. Oops, it didn't work. No conclusion here. But what I learned through this short little experiment is how the space around you affects your well-being in difficult to articulate ways. I said this during my final day recap, and I think it sums it up pretty nicely. So one of the things that's also really noteworthy in all of this is while we've been doing this experiment, we've also been moving the GT Live Studio up to our attic. It was down here in our basement with the yellow wallpaper and the Easter egg blue couch. Now it's upstairs and we're using an orange couch with a green background and the vibe is different. And there is definitely a perceptible change in how we feel in that space relative to how we felt in kind of the more yellow, warmer space. We're not sure if that's a good thing, if it's a bad thing, it's just different. And time will tell how that affects us. But what these couple of weeks have shown me between GT Live and this experiment is that the space that you put yourself in really does have imperceptible differences in the way you feel, in your mood, in your attitude, in your behavior, and that there is a lot of truth to the vibe or the aesthetics of a location, that it can really do things to the way that you approach your work, to the way that you approach your energy levels that might not be perceptible to you and might be difficult to articulate, but are impacting 
your relation. It's it's really cool. So, how can you apply this today? Declutter. Above and beyond all else, the one move that universally worked to ease all of our collective stress and anxiety, the one thing that gave us an immediate boost to everyone in the experiment, cleaning out the garbage. So, I'm actually gonna give you a bit of homework, friends. Yeah, that's alright. I want you to take a look around whatever room in your house you spend the most time in, and see how much clutter you have clogging up your space. And for one week, I challenge you to put it all away, keep it out of sight. And then, come back here into the comments and report to me if you feel the same difference that all of us felt in this episode. And if you feel like taking it one step further and actually filming your progress, we also have ourselves a brand new Team Theorist Instagram and Twitter, if that's where you prefer to scroll the hours away. Anyway, I look forward to seeing your feng shui journey as well. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go buy a measuring tape for Amy. We gotta go buy some bigger rugs. But hey, that's just a theory. A lifestyle theory. Keep looking and living sharp. Wow, I love feng shui, but you know what else I love? Style theory. Click on my left for our latest theory on anti-AI clothing, and click on my right for another fun and exciting theory, and make sure to hit that subscribe button. Well, that's all from me. I'll see you later. Bye!